the big sugar daddies, we call them big daddies, and they usually go after like girls from my bubinati. Monica. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hello, I'm Anna. Anna. So, welcome. Let me ask you, what do you do for a living? I'm an attorney. An attorney? Yeah. <laughs> what kind of law do you practice? Uh, family law. So not so medical they... malpractice? No. Okay, good. <laughs> welcome. <laughs> but family law, all the divorce stuff. Yes. Monica does not have the typical appearance of a family law attorney. And believe me, I know what family law attorneys look like. <laughs> so you have an interesting kind of look. What is your background? So I go by like the Chai Italian doll. I'm half Chinese and half Italian. Chai Italian. Chai Italian, I know. <laughs> by the way, Chinese and Italian, two of the best cuisines in history. I know. I can't it all imagine. goes back to food again. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you obviously, just based on the pictures, you've had some things done yes. in the past. At 11 years old, I started stuffing my bra. I just really like that look. I love like the big boobs, small waist, and I got my first boob job at 19. All right. Yeah. What size put in initially? 350s. All right. Yeah, a D. That's and a good size. No, not to me. Not for her. <laughs> oh, really? No, I'm pretty extreme. I went in with expectations of huge boobs. I was young. I didn't really know anything about plastic surgery. I was pretty extreme, like going boom, 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 nonstop, like with surgeries. And so I have had six boob jobs, putting me up to like 1,400 cc's. I woke up, I was like, man, this is what I've always wanted. After I started recovering, I started noticing like my nipples were more inwards as opposed to center of the breast. And okay. I had a lot of side boob. I like side boob. I just want my nipples to be more centered. What were your breasts like before you had that? Were your areolas small? Yeah, I mean, my areoles are the same size as they are now. They haven't stretched at all? They haven't stretched, no. Normally, when you expand breast tissue a lot, the areolas expand with it, proportionally. But sometimes there's a difference between the amount of elastic fibers within the areola and the immediately adjacent skin, so the skin stretches much more than the areola does. Patricia, first thing I want to ask you, what do you do? I work at a steel mill. A steel mill? Yes. Really? In my department, we turn molten steel into solid form. So really? I do everything from operating crane, carrying 350 tons of molten steel everywhere. And On the line with the guys I'm doing the all that? I'm the only girl ever. I was the first <laughs> and only female in my job description. No kidding. I would never in a million years guess this woman sitting in front of me worked in a steel mill. It's about as probable as Paul working as a dancer in a strip club. You do this all day long? 12 to 16. Hours a 12 day? 12 to 16 yes. hours a day? Mandatory 12, because I'm the only one that's qualified to do every job in the building. I'm proud of myself. I've worked my way from the bottom to the top. The way you're dressed, did you dress like this after work, or what's the deal here? Today, you have met Superwoman. Superwoman? Yes. Superwoman. Superwoman. What, what's that? It means it's super. super woman, well, I but... understand, but <laughs> super means super. I get that, okay. but, what, but what is like super, super dumb? <laughs> Let's be honest. Nothing says middle-aged white man more than misunderstanding slang. Patricia is the steel worker. Superwoman is who I transform into. It's your alter I, ego. I model, DJ. Really? Yes. Patricia is a very strange dichotomy. I don't really understand it, but I'll be honest with you, it's so cool. So when you're DJing, you're doing the whole mm, All that. and that this and that. Do you know how to shoki? No, I definitely you don't know how to do that. <laughs> Give us a demo. <laughs> oh, I could do that. Yes! Do it. I'm gonna watch you guys do it. Do it. <laughs> yes! <laughs> what do you do bro is awesome. <laughs> Like, he didn't really have it together, but with some more practice, I'm sure he'll be out there doing it, too. <laughs> so I guess the thing that's most prominent is the buttock area. Yes. So you had liposuction and fat transfer grafting yes. into the buttock area. Yes. A Brazilian butt lift. Yes. How much did he put in? 1,200 cc's. So you had 1,200 cc's put in each buttock. Mm -hmm. So what happened the second time? Second time, that doctor put 900 cc's. So you have 2,100 cc's of fat in each buttock cheek. Yes. Super booty, super booty, not super booty, super booty. What do you guys do? I'm a professional sugar baby. What does that mean? 
<laughs> What's a sugar baby? I know what a sugar mama is. Uh, a sugar baby is a young lady that is dating older men who provide for her. So then you guys... No. Uh, no, what? no, no, no. He's relation? like, he's no. my guardian angel. So I'm here as a personal friend. Okay. Who, who really know this wonderful person. So a sugar baby then, what are we talking about financially? A monthly allowance. Like, you know, you give your child a monthly allowance. So you give your sugar baby a monthly allowance. Can you tell me like an average allowance that someone makes? Uh... Well, there's different levels. I mean, an average sugar baby can get her cell phone bill or something paid. And then you have the elite sugar babies, which get maybe 6,000 a month. And then you have sugar queens like me that go higher. Really? And what do you, so is that like, an apartment. A house, a home. You're sort of his girlfriend. Yeah, exactly. Like, and all the, the only aspect that classifies it as a sugar relationship is the age difference. You ever thought about doing this? I don't really have to. Are you single? <laughs> Maybe when I'm 75, if I'm still single, then I might consider becoming a sugar daddy, maybe, at that age. The big sugar daddies, we call them big daddies, and they usually go after, like, girls from my Bubinati. Bubinati? Yeah, I'm the captain of the Bubinati. What is that? A big boob army. Oh, big boob, boob mafia. Like the Illuminati they yeah, talk the about. Boobinati. Oh, yeah, the Bubinati. The Bubinati. <laughs> this next patient's name is Flame. Flame is a gentleman who lives both as a male and as a female. Just a few years ago, it was considered bad practice to give a male female breast implants. But because things have really changed now in society, it's very acceptable to consider doing that under the right circumstances. She currently has breast implants that are actually quite old and has a superior displacement. There must be an encapsulation. Obviously has large scars and has the very difficult to fix double bubble deformity. Why don't we bring her in? So we're gonna say her. I, I, I don't know what, what her preference is. Why don't you bring Flame in and we'll ask her. Can you please send in Flame? Flame. Good morning. Hi, Dr. Nassif. Nice to meet you, how are you? Terry Dubrow, pleasure Good to morning. meet you. Nice to meet please you. Please have a seat. It's overwhelming to know that after 14 years, somebody's gonna really take a serious look on what they're gonna do with these boobs of mine, so. I'm a little apprehensive about it, but I'm excited at the same time. Could you give us a little sort of synopsis of your situation? We know you've had some breast surgery, right? But yes. you, you live as a man, but you work as a woman, correct? Yes. I am a stand-up comedian by profession and a female impersonator. And um, performing to me was more important than anything until I became a dad. Flame Monroe is a dad by day and a drag queen by night to support his three kids. OK. I understand that, that's respectable. You don't consider yourself in a transgender mode, right? I do consider myself transgender, but just not with a whole hoopla ha behind it because I'm dad to my children. I'm Mr. Flame to their friends. Okay, so we, we respect that. I am Lauren Powers and I'm known as the muscle goddess and I need to fix my breasts. I've had about 10 surgeries on these puppies and my nipples are like sitting up here and they're supposed to be here. Not only do I want to fix my breasts, but my neck has always bothered me. Being so lean and fit without body fat, it sags more. I got really strong to become a firefighter. I was a reserve and volunteer at two different fire departments, but I got discriminated against for being female. In hindsight, they did me a favor because it pushed me to be a heavyweight bodybuilder. I look this extreme because I like it. I like the way it feels. I like the power and the strength and the confidence. And most women are like, I never want to look like that. And I'm like, sweetheart, never in a million years. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I was very competitive at a very early age, whether it's sports, scholastic, you name it, I have to win it. <laughs> in 10th grade, I grew almost a foot and 40 double Ds. And all the guys were always looking at my breasts and not my face. So I got my first breast reduction at 18. I realized I was botched immediately. The nipples were going east and west. I had scars all the way around, so I had to have it again. Then they weren't big enough, so then I had another set. Then I had another set. I kept going bigger because my, my muscles kept getting bigger and my shoulders are broad, but big on big is too masculine looking. I've had several relationships through the years. I've been with men, I've been with women, but now at 52, I'm hoping to soften things up with my outer appearance and to attract a man.
A lot of guys are intimidated by me and threatened by me. I mean, I've run into it all trying to date lately. It's just been a nightmare. When people look beyond my biceps and get to know who I am, they realize that I'm a pretty cool chick.